Hey everyone, Ryan from Me Bike Escape, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the brand new Ride One Up Taurus, so let's get into it. Before we get into the walk around, if you are looking to purchase any Ride One Up electric bike, We'd really appreciate it if you use our affiliate link down in the description. It's a free and easy way to help support eBike Escape and makes videos like this one possible. We'll also throw down in the description some other helpful resources, our electric bike accessories list, top eBike brands page, and of course our electric bike discounts code page if you're looking to get the best deal on an electric bike. With that, let's get into the walk around of the recently announced Ride One Up Taurus. If you aren't already familiar with our reviews, first I'll give you a walk around and talk about all the components on this electric bike. Then we'll get into some first person riding footage, see what this bike can really do. And finally, some third person riding footage where I'll give you my concluding thoughts on this electric bike. So this is a brand new model, the Taurus launched in early 2023. Now, Ride One Up is a brand that I have been focusing on for almost three years. It's one of the first brands that I started reviewing and I'm a huge fan because they offer value priced electric bikes. So you're getting more out of your money when you purchase a Ride One Up electric bike. Now, speaking of price, this bike is priced at $12.95. It comes in three different colorways, green, gray and white. And it's also offered in a ST or step through. Now, of course, the step through is going to be more accessible. Now, one thing that's unique about Ride One Up on most of their models, if you opt for the step through, you're gonna get swept back handlebars, which puts you in a more upright riding position. On the XR, you get more standard straight handlebars, a little bit more of a normal or aggressive riding style. Now on the high step, it's a 30 inch standover height and on the step through 22.9 inch. Ride One Up has really been focused on commuter electric bikes up until recently. They recently announced the Rev One, which is actually their first foray into a different style of e-bike. That's a moped style e-bike. So Ride One Up has been refining their bikes over time, making them better. They offer a wide variety of models. So you can check out our review of the Roadster V2, the most affordable bike, the Core 5. Now the Taurus is actually taking the place of what was previously the 500 series. From there, it goes up to the 700 series and then the Limited and finally the Prodigy. There are a few improvements from the 500 series. Certainly one is looks. This bike just looks a lot more refined. The battery is integrated into the frame. And I actually think that this frame looks a little bit sleeker than the ones found on the Core 5 as well as the Limited. With that out of the way, let's get into the components and see what you get for the $12.95 price point. Something I am super excited to see that you don't often see at this price point, hydraulic disc brakes. These are Zoom hydraulic disc brakes, a brand of brakes that we see on many electric bikes, though not necessarily at this price point. In my experience, they perform really well, less finicky than mechanical disc brakes. So that is something that is a highlight of this electric bike. 180 millimeter rotors to go along with the paint job as well as the graphics that Ride One Up is using. You have these really nice Kenda booster tires, brown sidewalls, looks really classy. They are 27 and a half by 2.4 inches wide. Now compared to some of the other Ride One Up models, they come with commuter tires. These are a little bit more versatile. So if you wanted to do some light off-roading with this electric bike, certainly is possible. I personally wouldn't take this bike on any mountain bike single track but you do have some tread on these tires, which is really nice. Now say you are going to take this bike off the beaten path, you might wanna check out today's video sponsor, Tannis. This video is sponsored by Tannis. We're really excited to have Tannis as our first sponsor here at eBike Escape. Getting flats on an eBike can be especially difficult to fix, so why not help prevent them in the first place? Tannis Armor inserts are inserts that go inside your tire, providing 15 millimeters of protection at the base and two millimeters of protection on the sidewalls. Tannis makes purchasing the liners super simple. Simply go to their website, type in your tire size, it spits out the liners you need, don't forget the tubes. Then you can either install them at home by yourself or take them to your local trusted bike shop. While we do know there are many e-bike manufacturers that offer Tannis tire liners on their website, if you go directly to Tannis's website, we have negotiated a discount code for eBike Escape viewers. Discount code can be found in the description below. Thanks to Tannis for sponsoring this video. 
I also like that Ride One Up has a quick release up front. So if you wanted to remove this front tire, it's going to be nice and easy. You could throw it back in perhaps a larger SUV. Metal fenders, both front and rear included. Moving up from the fenders, we have an integrated front light. I actually think that this light is a above average one and Ride One Up uses very similar lights on various models. While it's not going to offer a lot of be seen visibility during the daylight, at night they do perform pretty well. Just a note on the Taurus, you do not get an integrated rear light. You don't get a rear light at all. Most companies, they will put the rear light on the back of a rear rack. Now, this bike doesn't have a rear rack. You can opt for the 700 series, which includes a rear rack if you want. Of course, this helps keep the price down of this electric bike. The Taurus does come with a front suspension fork. So if you're comparing this to the Core 5, that's one of the major differences as well as the brakes. There is a preload adjustment on the left and a lockout. It's either locked or unlocked on the right side. I'll push on the front fork so you can get an idea of what to expect. Certainly going to provide some additional comfort while riding and also what makes this bike a little bit more capable if you do decide to take it off-road. Before we get into the cockpit, I wanna talk briefly about weight. This bike weighs in at 54 pounds, and another thing that's a little bit more unique to ride one up is more assembly is required. That helps keep the cost down on these electric bikes. So what does that mean with the Taurus? You're not going to have the front fork installed, so you'll wanna have a bike shop. If you're not handy, install that. You'll also need to install the front brake as well as the crank. Now that's slightly more assembly than you'll find on other electric bikes, but that allows them to put this in the smallest box possible in order to save on shipping costs. And of course they pass that cost onto the customer. So if you're looking at other electric bikes, this one more than most, if you're not handy, you may want to have a bike shop take care of it for you. Moving on to the cockpit, we've been riding this bike around quite a bit here in Florida. This mirror is not included, but you can find these mirrors on our electric bike accessories list. These are the bar end mirrors from Hafni. The bike does, however, come with nice locking ergonomic grips. Really like to see that, a small but nice addition. I already talked about the Zoom hydraulic disc brakes, but they have motor cutoffs. As soon as you hit the brakes, it's going to cut power to the motor. The Taurus comes with a left-hand thumb throttle, and on the right, you have a Shimano Sys Index 7-speed shifter, a basic component offered from Shimano. It does get the job done, though, in my experience. These handlebars have a slight rise to them, and there is not an adjustable stem. So if you want to raise those handlebars up, you might want to consider an adjustable stem. Let's get into the monochrome display, a smaller display located on the left-hand side of the Taurus. In the top left-hand corner, you have bars to indicate battery capacity. I always like to see percentage, though this is a basic display and of course a very affordable electric bike. In the top right-hand corner, you have pedal assist, zero all the way up to five. You have speed front and center, odometer. We currently have 25 miles on this bike. Hitting the power button will give you additional information. Trip, distance, time, watts. That's how much power is going to the motor. Max speed, as well as average speed. To turn the front light on, you hold the pedal assist up button. You'll see an indicator at the top and the LCD display is backlit. Let's talk battery capacity. The battery is nicely integrated into the down tube of the frame. Turn the key to the right, which will release the battery. And then there is a latch, which will remove it completely from the frame. This is a Reenchin pack. So Reenchin actually makes the case of this. So it fits into the down tube. And I believe this is a Reenchin case that I haven't seen before. It looks really sleek and of course fits really nicely into the frame and it does have some LED indicators to give you an idea of how much charge is left. Red being the lowest, and then yellow or green in the middle, and it is blue when the battery is full. Two amp charger, which is very common on electric bikes. I really like that there's lots of clearance between where the battery goes and the tire. Sometimes that differs depending on the electric bike. So what you'll want to locate is the connectors here. Put that end in first and simply push the battery into place and it will lock. I wanna call out the really nice cable wrap job that Ride One Up has done with this electric bike. You can see the cables come into one bundle and then they're integrated into the frame. 
ride one up graphic on the down tube, some here on top of the top tube. Bottle cages on the seat tube, you can mount a bottle cage or a folding lock. And then we have the ride one up badge on the front of the bike. Class three electric bike and the company was established all the way back in 2018. The Taurus comes with this wider saddle. Now saddles are personal preference. If you find that this one isn't very comfortable, be sure to check out our electric bike accessories list where I compile the most popular ones that I see people purchase. Moving on to the pedals, we have Welgo metal pedals. We see these all the time on electric bikes. They get the job done, but if you want some color or perhaps more grip, you can purchase some aftermarket. In the rear, we have a burly kickstand. You can see it's just fine sitting here in the grass and it is of course located out of the way of the pedals. So no issues with the pedals coming in contact with that kickstand. Zoom hydraulic disc brake in the rear, nutted rear axle, no surprise there. They give you this plastic cover. And I'm really happy to see that they're using a torque arm that helps keep the rear wheel where it's supposed to be and is something that companies are doing for additional safety. Full coverage metal fenders in the rear and there are mounts here in case you want to add a rear rack to this electric bike. Let's talk about motor power. This is the same Shangy 750 watt sustained motor that you'll find on the Core 5. They are using a 22 amp controller on the Taurus. And stay tuned for the first person riding footage where I'll put this motor to the test. For gearing, we have a Shimano cassette 12 to 32 teeth in the rear and a double-sided 46 tooth front chain ring. I'll talk a little bit more about the gearing also in the first person riding footage. And finally, Shimano Altus for the derailleur. This is a component that we see on electric bikes all the way up into the $2,000 price point, sometimes even higher than that. I personally find that it gets the job done and it isn't on the most entry level side of Shimano components. You actually can get turny. So nice that they went with Altus a slight step up. Ride One Up has started to install this chain stay protector. It's branded and it just keeps your frame looking really nice in case you do decide to take this bike off road and your chain does jump around a little bit. And not surprisingly, this bike is using a cadence sensor instead of a torque sensor. That's what we'd expect on such an affordable electric bike, though Ride One Up does offer some models with torque sensors. All right, with that, let's see what this bike can do. Let's get into some first person riding footage on the Ride One Up Taurus. I have the speedometer app by Coolnix GPS speed to compare it to the speed on the Ride One Up display. First, we will start with throttle only. Now, one thing I wanted to mention, even in pedal assist level zero, you do have access to the throttle. So something to be aware of because that can differ depending on the electric bike. Also, this bike came shipped to me already as a class three electric bike, didn't have to go into the advanced settings. So we'll see what this motor can do when we get into the pedal assist portion. But first off, let's do throttle only. Should cut off at 20 miles per hour. Here we go, three, two, one, throttle only. Nice easy takeoff, one, four, eight, 11 miles an hour, 13, 15, 17, 18. GPS is reading 21, 22 miles an hour, 21. And the display is reading 21, 22 miles an hour as well. And it looks like the GPS is gonna hold us at 21 miles per hour. Now I do get the question whether you can ride an electric bike with no pedal assist. And of course the answer is yes, you're just not going to go as fast as you would on a non-electric bike. And at a leisurely cadence here in fourth gear, I can go six, seven, eight miles an hour, somewhere around there. And this is on the lighter end of electric bikes and certainly it's not a fat tire bike. So it is a little bit more capable though hills will be more of a challenge. Okay, let's go in the various pedal assist levels. I will shift all the way down into first gear and we'll go into pedal assist level one. Again, this is a cadence sensor and nice easy takeoff from this 750 watt sustained motor. I would shift up second gear, maybe even third gear. I prefer a little bit of a slower cadence going about 10, 11 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level two. Feel just a little bit more from this motor, going about 
13, 14 miles an hour. And third, maybe fourth gear. Feels pretty comfortable. Let's go ahead and go into a pedal assist level three. Feel like the pedal assist levels are nice and dialed in, giving you just a little bit of extra power in every mode. Fifth gear, going about 16 miles an hour, and I would call this certainly a more leisurely cadence. I'm not working overly hard or overly exerting myself. And we're getting close to that 18, 19 miles an hour. Let's go into pedal assist level four. Getting back up to speed, 17, 18. I would maybe shift up to six gear. And now we're hitting that 20 miles per hour. All right. Next, let's get to a straightaway with no stop signs so we can see just how capable this bike is. Okay, pedal assist level five from a stop. I'm in a higher gear. Cadence sensor very responsive still though. And still in sixth gear, 21 miles an hour, 22. I'm gonna shift up to seventh gear, 24 miles an hour. The display is reading slightly higher, 25 miles an hour. I'm gonna push it a little bit more. There's 25 miles an hour. And 26 miles an hour towards the end. Let's do that one more time. Get up to speed a little bit faster. There's 27 miles an hour and 28 miles an hour, I did see on the GPS. And it's holding me pretty easily actually at 27 miles an hour. So it just takes a little bit of time to get up to that speed, but still a plenty capable motor for most riders. Now in most videos, this is where I'd get into the hill climb test but given we are in flat Florida, that is not going to be possible. But one of the nice things is this motor shares the same motor with the Core 5. So you can check out our more recent Core 5 review if you wanna see how this motor does up our hill climb test on the throttle alone. All right, with that, let's get into some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Ride One Up Taurus. What's great about Ride One Up is they have an e-bike at every price point so you can pick depending on what meets your needs. The Taurus tucks nicely between the Core 5 at $1,045 and the 700 series at $1,595. It's the sweet spot for someone that wants to hop on an e-bike but still wants some nice features that you don't often see at $1,295. Namely the brakes but you also get included fenders, front suspension, and an integrated battery. The knobbier tires are also nice for those who plan to do some light off-roading. The motor is plenty of power for most riders and the ability to reach class three speeds is a nice perk. The 12.8 amp hour battery should get riders between 25 and 45 miles depending on the usual factors. The display is basic but provides the necessary information and the Shimano components, both the shifter and derailleur are sufficient for recreational riding. The Taurus and the Prodigy are my favorite looking e-bikes in the Ride One Up fleet, and in my opinion, it looks like a much more expensive e-bike than it is, but of course, that shouldn't be surprising given it's in Ride One Up's DNA to sell the best value electric bike. They've been doing so since 2018, and the company has grown quite a bit since then. From my perspective, keeping tabs on the Facebook group, the consensus is that customers are happy with the customer support, which is especially important for a direct-to-consumer e-bike brand. If you already own a Ride One Up e-bike, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. The downsides are few when it comes to the Taurus. An integrated rear light would have been nice, but again, there is no included rear rack for it to be attached to. The biggest consideration of buying a Ride One Up e-bike is assembly. It's not terribly difficult for the mechanically inclined, but you will need to install the crank arm, front hydraulic brake, and the front suspension fork. These things are important to get right, so take it to your local bike shop if you're not confident. We've done a few videos with our own local trusted mechanic if you wanna know what's involved. 
On the plus side, this extra assembly needed means the bike is priced more affordably than it otherwise would be. I've been recommending Ride One Up e-bikes for almost three years and it's a trusted brand. The Taurus hits all the marks of a solid affordable e-bike with some nice upgrades where it counts. For what it's worth, my wife raved about this e-bike, the power, brakes, fit. It made for a great second e-bike during our travels. Though if it were my money, I'd strongly consider the step-through variation for increased accessibility and the swept-back handlebars for a more relaxed ride feel. If that's not your preference, it's nice to have the choice between the step-through or the high step. If we've helped you decide on your next e-bike, check out the links in the description. Using our links prior to purchase keeps us reviewing awesome e-bikes like this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.